Today's video, it's all about this electric motor. I want to connect it up and get it running, but the problem with it is there's a whole bunch of wires in there, and then we've got all the connectors in there. Which one do I use to get it running? So, to make my life a bit easier, we need to look around the motor, and there is a manufacturer's ID plate and that usually tells you a bit of information about the motor. Here is a closer look at the ID plate. It tells me on the right hand side there it's possibly a two speed motor, 480 RPM and the second one is 15,000 RPM. It's 230 to 240 volts, 50 hertz. But what interests me the most is this motor will go up to 15,000 RPM it's a really high speed motor. Now that I know the motor spins at 15,000 RPM we can have a closer look at the business end of the motor. We see there's two brushes there and there is one wire and there's the other wire for the brushes. and tells me straight away that it is a series motor because series motors can spin very fast. Here is a view of the front where all the connections are made as this is a washing machine motor, these connections will all go to the control panel on the front of the washing machine. Now with a series connected motor, you have six connections on the motor, but we'll count them. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that is the problem we've got. We've got to work out which ones are which. To make life a little bit easier, I've made a schematic of a series connected motor and why there is six connections. Now I've identified two, it's the green and the yellow, they're the two brushes. Now what we need to identify is the two field coils there and there and each has got two connections. Now normally I would use a multimeter like that to sort out where the connections go and how to connect them up but not many people have these meters and I will show you a very simple way to test to see which connections are which. This is my simple method. I'm using a 12 volt sealed lead acid battery and I've connected up a tiny globe to it and there it works. Now we'll progressively go across to each connection. There's the first one, second one, third one, fourth one, ah here we go, we've got it. There's the other end of that connection and then we go to that one there, there's nothing, nothing and the very last one, ah that one lights up as well. So we've got three connections to that field coil. Now we have eliminated a few wires, that one's one end of the field connection, those two there are the brushes and that's one end and that's the other end of that field coil. Those two there go to a little generator on the end of the motor which measures the motor speed. So what we've got is these two left. So we'll stick the light on there and we'll see what happens. Yep, get it on properly. So those two connections there are for the other field coil. Now with my schematic I've identified all the colours of the wires and the connections and we'll show you why it is a series connected motor. You can choose either one of these for the source where electricity comes in, flows through the coil, comes out here and it connects to this brush, flows through the coils and the armature, comes out of that brush and then you can choose either one of those three wires and it flows through here and then back out. Right, this is how I've connected it up. This is the very first wire, that's the in wire going to the battery. And that's the out, that's coming out from that one field coil. And we've got, remember, two connections in one. So I'll put it just in here and we'll see what happens. And then we'll connect it to this one here and we'll see what happens. So that's turning anti-clockwise, running at a certain speed. Now I've put 
that blue jumper wire to the second connection on that field coil and we'll connect up the battery and we'll see what happens. Yeah, that seems to be running a little bit faster than the other one. So there's your two speeds. And now we'll have a go at reversing the direction of the motor. Now it's running anti-clockwise and we'll put the wires over back the front. Still anti-clockwise. So you can't change the rotation of the motor with those wires but I'll show you which ones to do it to. Now to change the direction of the motor we've got this connection and this connection here. These two are the brush connections so we need to put the blue there and the black wire to there and it will change direction. Right now we've changed the wires around on the brushes and now the motor will rotate in a clockwise direction. And there it goes. This is the schematic, how I've connected it up. I've used the green wire that goes to the battery and what it does, it flows through here, through the coil, field coil and goes over to yellow to the brush through here through the coils in the armature back through here the green the other side brush and it goes through the grey through that field coil and then comes out to the battery now with this field coil here there are many options you can use to connect it up now what I've done I've used the brown wire and completely ignored the black wire and that's the black wire there, it for some reason is up in the back part away from the other connections but you can use instead of the brown wire you can use that one there and go across to the brush and it'll give you the two different speeds now with these two here if you change this connection over to here and this one here to there that will change the direction of the motor but the last thing we've got to worry about is when we connect all this up this coil here, you can either put them, the battery on here or on here. If you put it on the wrong way, the motor will not run. You have to put it on the right way. And the only way to do it is to experiment using a battery at low voltage. Now because these motors will run on DC as well as AC, we'll do a quick experiment. You can see the meter, it's got 12.1 volts DC. That's DC side. So we'll pull them out and we'll put in AC. So we've got 13.9 volts. Now we'll run the motor on DC. There it's running. Now we'll run it over to AC. Nothing happens. Now we'll adjust the voltage up a bit until it runs. Now it's just starting to turn. Now we'll measure the AC voltage. It's got to get up to 42 volts before it'll turn on AC. This is why these motors run so much better on DC instead of AC. Now some of you will be wondering why haven't I connected it up to 240 volts? Well there's a good reason for that. A series motor needs a load on them because if you connect them up to 240 volts they will spin extremely fast in fact it's too fast it will end up throwing the windings out of the armature so be careful when you connect these things up test them always with a low voltage first and then when full voltage using a load on the motor right this is what I'm going to use the series motor for 
This is the old motor driving my experimental alternator. I'd like to replace that motor with the series motor. Before I can do it, I cast up these brackets a few weeks ago in iron. I need to put mounting feet on here so the motor can be used. Here is the series motor. I've put on the brackets. It's all mounted. It's ready to drive my four pole alternator. Now comes the big test for the series motor. It's connected to my alternator. I've got a 150 watt globe, 240 volt, and we'll see if we can run it. I think it's time to put another globe in. Now what I'll do, I'll put another 40 watt globe on so it has a total load of 190 watts and we'll see if the series motor will drive the alternator. Yep, work really well. They're quite a good motor, these motors. One last test for the series motor. This is one of those cheap speed controllers you can buy for series motors, and we'll see if we can control the speed with it. Now you can see why these series motors are very versatile to use in the home.